who turned out to assert their sovereign will at the constituency level on Friday last week on the forums arranged for public participation on the impending impeachment of one Rigardi Gashagua, the deputy president. Kenyans were with great clarity and unity, united in their voice, telling both Ruto and Gachagua that they stand impeached. They came in as a pair and they'll go home as a pair. That was the message of Kenyans. Indeed, it was very impressive that Kenyans were not diverted from the pressing national issues to power games. And they were able to put out their pressing needs, which should be looked after rather than the power games of impeachment. Our constitution is the supreme embodiment of our collective will as a nation. It's a covenant entrusted with the protection of our sovereignty, democracy, and social justice. It is the solemn duty of the president as the nation's highest custodian of this sacred document, assisted by his deputy to safeguard its principles with unwavering fidelity. Today, as we stand at this historic juncture, where the actions of President William Ruto and his deputy Rigadi Gashagua constitute not only a gross dereliction of duty by the presidency, but a calculated assault on the foundational pillars of our republic. The presidency and the entire government were impeached by Kenyans as far as we are concerned on the 25th of June this year during the Gen Z protests. The exercise therefore arranged for the impeachment of the deputy president ironically turned into a reminder of the entire presidency and government that they stand impeached by Kenyans. And I've already said that if they hoped to divert attention from the critical issues of the day, they were not able to do that. They failed miserably. And lest we forget, we want to remind Kenyans of the violently removed volunteers who were seeking to fish for more bodies at that quarry. But so many things are happening that we actually no longer appear to be as outraged as we should be. We must demand that that quarry be drained for Kenyans to know whether there are more bodies lying there and for answers to be given as to who is murdering and dismembering Kenyans. The Ruto regime had hoped to divert Kenyans from the economic sabotage that is going on. The shedded deal of mortgaging Kenyan's premier gateway, the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, to a, the Adani group, which is scandal ridden, and against whom questions of mal practices are being raised in many parts of the world. This amounts, the giving of this Adani group, our premier gateway, without competitive bidding and without public participation or the approval of parliament, is actually economic sabotage. Jobs stand to be lost not only at the airport, 
but also jobs relating to the export of horticultural products. Under this Adani deal, it is the Adani group who will determine what happens at the airport. It means our many farmers, horticultural farmers, and those employed along that chain will be subjected to higher prices because the Andani group have not come as charity workers. They are coming to make money. It means the future of so many has been put in jeopardy. And that is why we call this economic sabotage. The same Adani group is being given concession over power distribution. Again, this is economic sabotage. We are already suffering very high prices of uh, power. We are subjected to that by KPLC. Now with the Andani group, we cannot hope that things will be better. They can only be worse. You wonder why a regime would sabotage its own economy. And the only conclusion we can come to is that Adani is a front for cartels, high place cartels within the Ruto regime. We have also seen economic sabotage through the deliberate mismanagement of our mineral and marine wealth. Our re mineral resources in Kuala, in Taitataveta, in Busia, in Migori, in Kitui, and many other parts of the Republic, concessions are being given with total opaqueness to foreigners. And with deliberate harm, being occasioned to the host communities where these minerals are. This cannot be happening unless Adani is but a mere front of cartels within the Ruto regime. And I want to remind us that during the campaigns, Ruto and his supporters were telling people that they are coming to dismantle cartels. It appears they were talking of themselves coming in to remove, if at all there were cartels, and to perfect the art of capturing the state and putting it in the hands of cartels. We've also seen the dismantling of a working health system. You will remember that when the Ruto regime came in, NHIF was a going concern and was working for many Kenyans. I can testify that I know of many poor people who were not only assisted to get quality health services by NHIF, but some were assisted to travel to India for treatment. In the two years of the existence of the Ruto regime, NHIF has been, had been run to the ground, hospitals were no longer accepting NHIF cards and now since Tuesday come in SHIF shift. We have not forgotten seeing the tears of an old man who had been denied dialysis. But this is just one person. How many others were crying out there not under the glare of the media without us knowing. We all know that those who require dialysis, if they don't get it on time, it can lead to untimely death. We do not know how many people and in what manner they have been affected by this clumsy transition from NHIF to SHIF. We also were told that Chief was coming to expand the health services. We know that is a lie. We have seen indication that Chief will actually restrict access to health for many. 
It is raiding the pockets of Kenyans. Whereas under NHIF, every Kenyan was required to pay 500 shillings a month. SHIF is requiring employed Kenyans to forego 2.75, literally 3% of their salaries. These are already overtaxed Kenyans. And while their pockets are being raid, raided, the services given by SHIF are wanting. There is information that for dental services, families will only access about 2,000. There is information that for maternity, mothers will only get payment of up to 10,000. Under Linda Mama, in public hospitals, women were accessing maternity services without paying. How many will be forced to deliver away from hospitals? This is a violation of the Constitution, in particular Article 43, which provides that the government of the day will ensure that Kenyans have quali access to quality health services. We should be transitioning to universal health care across the board.